Hey everybody. So today we're going to be hanging up a ceiling fan and we're going to show you how to wire the fan and the light kit separately on two different switches. So um, these are kind of the tools you need. We're going to need a ladder of course to get up there and demo the old fan. Um, our current situation with the other fan is it has one whip or one wire connecting the switch box to the fan so the wire up there wouldn't be able to support an extra an extra device so we have to run an extra wire for it um, some of the tools we need is we need a way to, to get through the plate in the attic so to get down into the wall to the switch box um, we're going to need a two gang pop-in box because the one we have now is a single gang so we want two switches remember so got a switch and a plate um, you need an impact you could use a screwdriver impacts a lot quicker put your switch back together uh, circuit breaker finder some way to cut the sheetrock I like to use my multi-tool but you can use a sheetrock saw if you need to um, headlamp Romex, of course, I'm using 14.2. You could use 14.3 um, or 12.3, meaning two hots. That'd probably be easier to do. But this is all I have, and I'm not buying a new wire. So we need strippers, um, lineman pliers, sorry, to make. Um, we're, not, we're not talking to mommy, sweetie. Be there in a second. We need lineman pliers to make our joints my daughter's gonna help us and uh, fish sticks to um, get our wire down into hey be careful be careful be careful sweetie <clears throat> we're gonna need our fish sticks sorry about that to fish our wire from our attic and our fan down to our switch box and we got a nice fan just picked this up at Home Depot it was a Hampton Bay it was really cheap they're usually kind of expensive so my other fan I hit it with the mattress so it's not working now <laughs> uh, circuit breaker finder to shut off the circuit you know you plug that in hook it up to your wires plug it in it'll tone it out in your box um, one thing you're gonna really need if you don't have that you can use a a ticker or voltage meter you could also use your meter I'm sorry voltage meter <clears throat> a screwdriver you're gonna need so yeah so these are some of the basics you need so you don't really need the drill but you need a way or the impact but you need a way to cut into your plate if your hole's not big enough for another wire so hand tools drill way to cut the sheetrock new box you know, tape, that's what you're going to need. Okay. okay, so we're in the room where the new fan's going. Uh, again, we have this single switch that's controlling the fan. So that controls the light and the fan. So if we wanted to use them separately, we'd have to use the pull strings there. So we don't want that. We want, them, we want two switches, one for the light, one for the fan. So the next step is to demo the fan. Um, turn the switch off. Turn the switch off. And that should kill everything in that box. All those wires. But you should never assume that they're dead. So that's why you want to use your ticker. When you take that fan off, feel all those wires. If this thing beeps, there's something hot up there. So it should kill everything though. Shutting off that switch. Okay, now... The old fan is demoed, so I'm going to use our ticker and feel those wires. So those are dead, so we can touch those and be fine. Okay, our next step after the old fan is demoed is to open up our switch box and kill the constant hot in this switch. So every switch is going to have that. It's going to have a constant hot, you know, a wire coming from the breaker or somewhere else that's constant and your wire that goes up to your fan that's called your switch leg 
so it's off now. If I turn this switch on, it's going to be hot. See that? Okay. So, turn that off, open it up, and we have to open this box up, get a wire from here, the switch box, to our new box. So we'd have another whip coming out of there, another piece of Romex coming out of there. Alrighty, so our cover's off. Um, let's see what we're dealing with here. We have our switch. Um, you can see we have a joint here. That looks like that's going to be our constant hot. And this single one looks like it's going to be our switch leg. You can tell that because this one's hot. This one's not. And the switch is off. So if we turn that on, that's going to be hot. Try to switch it off without shocking myself. See that? It's another way you can see if your switch is working good. Uh, my house is really new, so it's new construction. They stabbed it in the back. I uh, really don't like that. It's, it's a point of failure. You should always hook them around. So that's how we're going to do it. Hook them around the screws there. So, so we're going to take this off here. Be careful. Take these off. And we're going to get our circuit breaker finder on here. You could just have your friend... You know, I'm by myself today, so you just could could put that on there and uh, get your friend on the cell phone, have him in the switch box, and just have him hitting breakers until, until it goes off. But I'm alone today, so I'm using my circuit breaker finder. Okay, so here's my circuit breaker finder. Uh, it's an ideal circuit identifier. Um, you got your transmitter here and your receiver down there. So what this does is hooks up to the hots. You just need one on there. Um, hook it onto your hot and your neutral. And it'll send a signal through that wire that this can pick up. So here's your receiver. Um, so yeah, let's go to our circuit box and find that breaker. Okay, I'm at my box. Um, first thing I want to do is turn this on away from the box. So... Cycle it through once, and it's going to make a bunch of noise. Go through them. Now, it'll find our breaker. That should be it. Yeah, that's dead. So it's safe to work on the switch box now. And let's mark our switch leg with a piece of tape. Okay, now we undid all the joints with our lime and pot pliers. Now we're going to have to open up this box to make it fit our two gang. And it'll make it easier for us to get our wire in there when we fish it up the wall. So my best guess is this box is nailed onto this stud. And this will be empty drywall here. So we're going to get a big screwdriver and kind of pry it over and see if we can see nails. And then I'm going to use my multi-tool and cut those nails off. And we're going to open it up a tiny bit. Don't open it up too much this way on a popping box because it won't fit. And you'll have to do a lot of patching. So we're going to open up this box a bit and see what we're working with. Okay, so we were right. We were right on the nails. They're up here. So I'm going to use my multi-tool and cut them off. Okay, now this box is off of the nails. You can see it's flopping around there. Now we're going to trace out our two-gang box and get this old box out. You can either try to get it out, pull it out this way. We're going to try that. If that doesn't work, you can kind of snip it, you know, and get these wires out and sort of abandon it down into the wall there. So... Now we're going to trace out our two gang box. Okay, so it's traced out. You put it on there like when you trace out a box, pop in box. Uh, you trace it out that way. You flip it over. So, kind of stuck it there and traced it out. That's what we did. So now, use our multi tool and cut this out real neat. Uh, I like the multi tool because it cuts it out so neat. So, Alright, so our box is out. 
a little tip. There's uh, there's little wings that hold on the nail. Um, use your multi saw and cut those off while it's in there. So this box comes right out and doesn't destroy your blow out your hole here. So, all right. So now we're gonna go up in the attic, get a fish stick down into here, and I'm gonna stick a fish tape fish stick through one of those holes and locate it in the attic. Everything's really close here, so my attic is right there. So we'll do that. Alrighty, so what I did was stick a fish stick through uh, the fan box so I can locate myself up there really quick, minimize your attic time. And all I gotta do is see if I have enough room to get another line down through these original holes that these wires are coming through. If not, I'm gonna drill my own, just send the fish stick down. Alrighty. We'll do that next okay so getting ready to jump up there i like to leave the wire down here get the fish stick down tie it up and then pull it up to where we need it so there we go okay so i'm in my attic you can see the fish stick that's from the fan so we're going to get our wire up through this plate And it should be somewhere over here in this area. They got about three feet of insulation in this house. So we're gonna be digging through the snow. All right. All righty, so we dug through here and here's our plate. You can see the wire coming from the fan. So we need to get another one down into there and over to our fan. So should have enough room to get another line down there. So we'll try that first. All righty, so success. We got it through. Um, let's tie up this uh, wire here and pull it over to our fan box. Alright, so it's tied up like so, nice and tight. Uh, we're gonna pull it. Hey, buddy. Come on. What are you doing? What are you doing down there? Alrighty, so here's our fan box. So we're just gonna get this through. Just get that through there. There's plenty of slack up here to pull it from down there. So be careful in these attics during the summer. It's really goddamn hot. Uh, I'm an electrician by trade. I don't know if I mentioned that. So don't be afraid to call someone if you need to. Alrighty, so the wire's pulled. Got it from our switch box. Switch box to the fan box. So that's our new switch leg. Alrighty, so we got all our wires back in our box. Um, we're gonna tighten everything up. Too tight. Cool. There we go. We'll make up all our joints and hook up our fan. All right, let me kind of explain what's going on here. So, we ran our new Romex into here. So, we tie up our neutrals, tie up all of our grounds. Make sure you have two grounds coming out, you know, for each switch. Um, this was our hot. I remember because we marked our switch leg, so this is our new wire that we ran. So we tie up our hots, make a joint, and remember we're going to have two switches. So these are switch legs, one for the fan, one for the light. So we're going to need to tie on two pigtails onto the hots to service each of those um, switches. So that's what I'm going to do next, tie up two pigtails onto there. And then put wire nuts on everything, get it nice and neat, and get everything landed. Alrighty, so I got everything wired up. Uh, a couple other tricks, things that I like to do. I like to have the hot on the bottom and the switch leg on top. That's just a personal thing. And when you bend your hooks, bend them clockwise. So when you screw that screw on, it'll tighten it off. If you do it the other way, when you tighten it, it'll kind of pop off. So... We're gonna get this box put back together and hook up our fan. All right guys, so that switch is put together. The only thing we gotta do is deal with it up here. We're gonna strip that Romex, our new switch leg, and we're gonna tie up our grounds and the white wire, which is the neutral. We're gonna leave the black wire separate. Those are separate switch legs. Now we're gonna turn the breaker back on and make sure we got our switch legs correct. 
So, turn our switches on. Get our ticker. Should both be hot. Now we're going to turn the left one off, which is the one I want for the light, and mark the one that's off. So it's going to be that one. So that's going to be for our light. Alrighty, we'll get this fan back together. Alrighty, and when you wire your two new switch legs, the blue is going to be for the light, the black is for the fan. So you should wire these separately on the two new switch legs. Here we go. Um, the blue wire from the fan is going to my switch leg that controls the light and black wire from the fan goes for my old switch leg. So we'll tuck these in, get it. Here's the fan.